Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Which is the right Bible? If, if there's a conspiracy to change the Bibles, surely God is big enough to protect one Bible and to make sure that one of them is at least right. Now you're in John chapter 1. Look at verse number 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Listen, we go to church to hear the Word preached, but it also teaches us that Jesus is the Word. It says that He was with God and He is God. Look at the next verse. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. Did you know that Jesus was the creator of the universe? The Bible teaches it. There's a bunch of verses. But these, this is one of the reasons we go to church. Hey, I want to know all the verses. We should study that out, right? This is something you'll learn at church. Look at verse number 14. Verse number 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So here it says, the Word was made flesh. People say, oh, mock us. Well, you worship the Bible. Listen, it's not about this paper, this cardboard, this book, but the words that are on the page are living words. Amen. They are written by the one true living God. He's given it to us for a reason. This is the foundation of our church. This is the authority in our church. Amen. What is written in here, I must submit myself to. If I say something that's wrong and you point it out to me and you show me in the Bible, I will admit I'm wrong. This isn't about what I, my opinion. It's about what God has said. Whether I like it or not, it's a fact. And it's very important because he teaches the word was made flesh. Are you turning to turn to Psalm chapter 12? But you know, there are a lot of Bibles today that omit very important things. In 1 John 5 7, the Bible says, There are three that bear record in heaven the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. The Bible teaches the Trinity, it says that we are made in God's image, we have a body, soul, and a spirit. There is a likeness. We are made in His likeness. But it teaches that the Word was made flesh. Now, 1 John 5, 7, where it says, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, that verse is deleted in all of the new popular Bibles. That verse is totally deleted. You literally go from verse number 6 to 8. Or they reword it. Some of them reword it and they keep it there, but they've cut the verse in half to where they take out the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. There is a conspiracy among Bibles to change them, to delete things that are in the Bible so that you can teach other doctrines. This is a big deal. Listen, if you have an NIV this morning, that verse is deleted. If you have an ESV, it's deleted. If you have a New Living Translation, it's deleted. An NASV, an RSV, and many, many others, it's deleted. Now we learn that Jesus is the Word that became flesh, and we learn that He is with, it was the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost. But how can you accurately describe that in a Bible that's deleting doctrine about God? Listen, this is a big deal. Now look, you're in Psalm chapter 12. I want you to look at verse number 1. Help, Lord, the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips and a double tongue do they speak. Psalm 12 gives us this warning here that the faithful are failing from the land. Right In America, you could say that we are not as righteous as we used to be. There are not as many Christians today as we used to have. The faithful are failing, and it's because of the lies, the vanity, the double tongue. Listen, all these other Bibles, the, the wrong Bibles, the false Bibles, they change the Word of God. They speak with a double tongue. They speak out of both sides of their mouth. They literally contradict themselves. There's a problem with the Bibles today. And listen, I'll make it real simple for you. That what we call the, the King James Bible today... It was known as the authorized version. It was known as the Holy Bible initially. And they started calling it the King James Bible to make a distinction because of all these new and popular versions that were coming up, yeah. mostly propagated by the Catholics, by the Jesuit. But I'll make it real simple. The King James Bible has over 4,000 
copies that, that are identical. Whereas the newer Bibles, the, the reason they make the changes, they have less than 40 copies that say, well, we deleted this verse, we deleted that verse. And listen, of these copies, these are not complete copies. It's not like you're, you're walking up and seeing a whole Bible. A lot of them are just simply, well, I've got one book and part of it's missing. Or I've got this one letter and I don't have this verse. So therefore, what they're doing is they're making a straw man argument. Well, if it's not in this one, we should delete it from these 4,000. There is a conspiracy to change the Bibles today. It's very important to understand. Look at verse number 6 here. Do you believe God is big enough to preserve His Word? Think about it. He made you. There's more information. You go pick a flower. You go pick that dandelion out there. There is more knowledge and data just in that one flower than all the computers of the world. There is more information in what God has made than what man could ever do. And if He's big enough to make you and sustain your life and keep breath in your lungs. I think He's, he's big enough to protect His Word. Amen. The Bible. Look at verse number 6. The words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Forever. It's God's job to keep them, to preserve them, to keep them from generation forever. It's our job to read it. All right? That's the problem. Most Christians don't have power in their life because they don't know their Bible. They're not reading their Bible. Now look, if you've got the wrong Bible, that's a problem. Now turn to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter number 1. We have some handouts in the back, and these are freely available. It's got over 300 verses that have been changed in all the modern Bibles. If you don't have one of these, take one on your way out. Or if you'd like to print it out for yourself at home, just go to our website, steadfastjacksonville.com slash Bible. On that, it shows in this and on there, it shows there are 16 verses that have been completely deleted. Like Acts chapter 8, verse 37, we looked at earlier. Like 1 John 5, 7, and many others. Right? It also shows there's over 300 major changes where they take out the name, the Lord Jesus Christ. They delete the God, Godhead. They delete Jesus out of the Bible. They delete the miracles. You know, of those 16 verses, it could be said there's actually 25 that may delete in footnotes. A lot of the new Bibles will put a little star, and it's a study Bible at the bottom, and it says, well, this wasn't really in the originals. And when, again, when, when the new Bibles say the originals or in the text, they're talking about these 40 partial copies of the Bible that are questionable. They're not talking about the 4,000 sure copies that have been around. It's not the same that's always been. There is a conspiracy. There is an intention by the devil to change the Bible. They want to make it appealing and say it's easier to understand. And that actually, too, is a lie. There is a deception there. There are many documentaries you can watch. I don't think we have any copies this morning. Normally we do. But New World Order Bible versions. You can watch it for free on YouTube. It gives you a great, a great view of the history. Another one is A Lamp in the Dark. Lamp in the Dark. This is there's a three-part series on the history of the Bible, how it came together. Another one that you may have to rent is called uh, KJB, The Book That Changed the World. They're all very good uh, video evidence of documentaries that's showing how the Bible came to be. It wasn't just up to King James. There were many godly men and great scholars. Maybe they weren't all godly men, but there were great scholars also that spoke many, many languages that, that were used of God to preserve and protect His Word to every generation. If you don't believe that, then I, I would challenge you to watch those and check it out for yourself. But listen, I want you to know, you can trust the Bible. Yeah. Now that you're saved, now that you believe the Lord, you're baptized, you're moving forward in God's life, and it's like, man, I've got the best sword on the market. That's right. What are you doing with it? Uh -oh. You know how many people I've seen, they'll say, well, you know, I think I'm going to try bicycling. I've got a friend, he rides a bicycle, so I'm going to do all the research. I want the carbon fiber frame, and I, want this, I want the spokeless design, and I want this fancy air. You know, and I'm going to spend $2,000 on a bike to set it in the closet. Right? That's a lot, a lot of Christians, they figured out, okay, I figured it out, I got the right one. I'm going to leave it on my desk. Listen, there is a spiritual warfare today. Yeah, there is. You have to pick up the sword to defend yourself. You have to pick up the sword to, to set the captives free, to get your family saved, to get your friends saved, to make sure they're going to heaven. You've got to know the power of the Word of God. You have to trust the Word of God. You have to use it. Right. I have a buddy many years ago, 
And you know, I, I've heard soul winning. I hear a lot of people, oh, I read all the books. I read the Quran. I read the Bible. No, you didn't. You're a liar, yeah. right? How many? Oh, I read the whole Bible. Oh, did you quote one verse? <laughs> Can't do it, right? When I had a buddy several years ago, and he did. He has read all the books. He had copies of them all. And when I met him, he was not saved. He got saved, and he read the whole Bible like in a month. And he was like, well, now that I know which one is right, now I want to read it. Because he saw the conspiracy from the outside looking in as an unsaved man. He said, well, why are there so many Bibles? Because there's only one Quran. Why do we have 300 Bibles? He knew that he figured something was wrong. And when he figured it out, he got saved. He read the whole Bible all the way through. He got zealous about his Bible reading. Listen, and this guy grew spiritually greater than some men that I knew that have been saved their whole life. Wow. There are people that, well, I just read, you know, one proverb a day. That's great. But it's not enough. It's not good enough. If you're doing nothing, start reading a proverb of the day. Whatever the day is, read that proverb. But if you'll read the Bible 15 minutes a day, you can finish it this year. If you read it an hour a day, you can, you can read it four times in a year. How valuable is it? This is what God has given you to do battle, to help yourself, to have power in your life. Are you using it? Are you willing to sacrifice your time? Look, you're in 2 Peter chapter 1. Find verse number 16. Verse number 16. It says, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we were made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of His majesty. For He received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice from Him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son in whom... I am well pleased. He's referring back to the point, what was, what's commonly called the Mount of Transfiguration, where Jesus revealed His spiritual glory and power to a few of His disciples. They saw it. They were eyewitnesses. They're saying, I'm not repeating something I heard. This isn't some fable. I know for a fact that Jesus was God. We saw God the Father open up the heaven and say, this is my Son. They knew it was the Savior. This is the Son of God everyone was waiting for. The Christ, the Savior. And He says, but listen, look what He says. Look what He goes on. Verse number 18, he says, And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. He's saying, I saw those things. I saw miracles. I literally saw heaven opened up and God speaking. But the words, the Bible is more sure it's more dependable than what you think you saw, what you think you heard. He's saying what's written here will last forever. God will protect it. Look what he says. We have a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. He's saying you would do well to take heed to the Bible. It would do you Great things in your life if you would just open it up, read what it says, obey it. Accept it as the Word of God and begin to grow. It will shine a light in your dark heart. It will help you shine a light in the darkness of the world. It will help you overcome the power of darkness. Take heed in your life to the Word of God. Look at verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. If I speak something about the Bible, I have to prove it from the Bible. I can't just make it, well, because I said so, it makes it so. No, not around here. The Bible's the authority. Yeah, no right. prophecy, no preaching is of any private interpretation. All right, all right. Well, I feel people that wear red shirts are in sin. That's a private interpretation. That's wrong. Wait a minute, i got some guys in here that need to deal with it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but think about it. The Bible's making it clear. We have an authority structure. How can you check that the things that I say are true? Right, you remember the Bereans? They were reading to make sure what they heard was so. They were studying the Word every single day to find out what they were hearing at church, whether it was right or not. As Christians, we've lost that. As Christians, if we would regain that, we would have power in our life. Look what he says. For the prophecy, verse 21, the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. These men we're exercising holiness. And it says here, the Holy Spirit worked through them. It wasn't the will of man. They didn't just sit down and say, I'm going to write this cool story. No. 
God, through his spirit, through these men, preached what was necessary. God made sure it got written down, what he wanted written down. And now he's making sure that you have it in your hand today. And listen, if you don't have a Bible, grab one off the shelf when you leave. Right? If you say, oh, I got the wrong Bible. I got a new King James instead of a King James. Don't make a big deal out of it. Walk over there, pick one up, take it with you, free of charge when you leave. Right? Those are free. Everything's free in this church. The, the, we've received it for free. We give it for free. Listen, God wants you to have the right Bible. You need to have confidence in the Bible. And I would, I would encourage you. There's a lot of you in here already. Well, I already know I got the right Bible. Great. What are you doing with it? Are you actually using it? Are you at least doing 15 minutes a day? Right? You men that say one day I want to be a preacher myself. I want to be a pastor. Hey, are you doing an hour a day? We ought to. We ought to be willing to sacrifice. Well, you know what? The body wants to sleep in, right? But the Spirit says, I want to grow mightily and have God's power on my life. I'm willing to sacrifice for some spiritual growth.